uh, WHO study confirms that one in 10 Indians may develop cancer in a lifetime. According to a report by ICMR published in August 2020, the number of cancer cases in India is estimated to be over 13 lakh and may increase to 15.7 lakh by 2025, with its prevalence being marginally higher among women. At a time when advanced treatments are available and the disease is at large extent curable, this data shows a throbbing need for awareness among people. At MediCircle, we are conducting an exclusive series on the occasion of World Cancer Day, facing eminent oncologists, bureaucrats, and social workers over the discussion to bring awareness about cancer, its treatment, and its related. I'm Smita Kumar, and today in this series, our guest is Dr. Sanjay Mandal. Dr. Sanjay Mandal is a senior consultant, oncosurgeon, specializing in GI oncosurgery. He's a well-known oncologist with a rich experience over over three decades in healthcare. Dr. Sanjay is currently working as a, an associate with AMRI Hospitals, Kolkata. Hello, Dr. Sanjay. Welcome to MediCircle. Hello. Hello. Thank you. Good evening. Yeah. evening. Thank you for joining us, Dr. Sanjay. So in this past COVID Thank you. World, it's my pleasure. Yeah. So in this past COVID world where health is our priority, what according to you are the necessary changes that can help an individual to lead and afford a healthy life? Yeah, I think this is a very important question. I think uh, post-COVID, uh, in spite of the availability of vaccines, I mean, vaccines have just come in. And uh, they're just being given only to healthcare workers. But in spite of the availability, I think the three important pillars still stand. That's using the mask, uh, social distancing, and basic hand hygiene. I think these three are still important. And we would need to still keep on following this at least for the next year, if not more. I think there are certain other life, I mean, general practices which we might need to modify considering the COVID scenario. And uh, though there are a number of them, but some of them are still very important. Like uh, when we go ahead and arrange a uh, gathering, the gathering has to be kept fewer in number. We can't have the old, uh, I mean, what we were doing in the past of having, um, I mean, n number of guests. Uh, we still need to keep uh, the number of guests limited. I think if you are having a gathering, avoid having gatherings in closed spaces. Open spaces are very important. Uh, avoid eating out still uh, or make takeaways at home very important. It, it, it still uh, is good for the um, industry. I mean, you're not doing disservice to anybody. Uh, these few things are still important. And obviously, uh, avoiding uh, public transport for the time being uh, would be helpful. Uh, having a transport of your own is, is better. And uh, I think it, it's helpful in the long run for the time being. And apart from that, I'm sure there are a lot of other factors that need to be taken into account, but these are some of the important ones we need to consider. Sure. Yes. Uh, Dr. Sanjay, whole genome sequencing of tumor cells could help predict the prognosis of a patient's cancer and offer yeah. clues to identify the most effective treatment, suggests an international study. In other words, genomics is providing insights into how an individual's cancer might progress and its likely response to the treatment. However, do you think it is cost effective? Uh, before I come to that question, I think you have raised a very important point. Uh, genome sequencing is going to be the future of diagnosis and treatment. And I, I, it has come into a big way in some cancers. Uh, yet to come in some other cancers, but it's going to be the future. Uh, if I take a few examples, for example, in breast cancer, though not my area of expertise, but in breast cancer, you, you have the BRCA gene 1, BRCA 2. Uh, they have now come into the vogue. And if people have this, there is a high chances of recurrence. And these are the patients who need to be followed up very closely. We have the story of Angelina Jolie, who had a prophylactic mastectomy done. Um, that may be a bit too far-fetched, but still patients need to be followed up. Now, uh, in, in case of in my field, uh, if you take colon cancer into the picture, there are a number of gene sequences are, which are there, which are uh, available commercially, which help in predicting how the disease is going to go ahead, how the disease is going to progress. 
for example, if you have a particular gene sequencing positive, you will know that this cancer is going to be very aggressive. And even if the cancer is in an early stage, uh, you would uh, treat them very aggressively with chemotherapy after surgery. Uh, similarly, certain gene sequencings indicate that the tumor might not be responsive to chemotherapy, might not be responsive to particular drugs like cetuximab and bevacizumab. And in these patients, even if they might be a slightly advanced cancer, you would probably avoid giving them unnecessary treatment. So it is very important and it is very cost effective because bevacizumab and cetuximab, for example, are very expensive. Each dose costs lakhs of rupees. And if you can avoid them where they are not going to work, it not only saves a lot of money, but it saves uh, what do you call a lot of suffering for the patient because chemotherapy is, uh, I mean, it, it's, 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 it's not very easy for patients undergoing chemotherapy. So if you know that it's not going to, not going to work, then definitely uh, you would avoid giving a chemotherapy, which is not going to be useful. And here it becomes very cost effective. Genome sequencing is not very expensive. And if you can use it to the effect that uh, you can titrate your chemotherapy, then obviously it becomes very cost effective in the long run. And I think as more and more cancers are being genome sequenced and we have commercial uh, data available, I think it's going to be the tool of the future. Sure. So I think we have got a new technology to cure cancer patients in a much better way. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Uh, with the passing years, there has been increase in the number of cancer cases. According to a study in India, with a population of 1.35 billion, witnessed as many as 1.16 billion new cancer cases and 7,84,800 cancer deaths in 2018. So what do you think? What are the reasons and how they can be controlled? Uh, I think cancer, uh, the cause of cancer, I think can be divided into two main types two main categories. I mean, one, you have the genetic cause and you have the environmental cause. Genes are something that we cannot control. We cannot change. We have our own genes. It is the environmental aspect that we can change. And um, I mean, it, it's not going to be an overnight feature. What, whatever we do today is going to reflect in our next generation. And I think that is very important. Starting from the diet, going on to the environmental pollution, and the overall environment is very important. And I mean, diet is going to be a good, is going to play a very important role. And uh, people have to stick to healthy diets. Uh, they have to stick to diets which are fresh uh, fruits, vegetables, avoid the carbohydrates, avoid fast food. I think these are very important. Sticking to a, a, a healthy diet is, is one of the most important features which we can do to prevent uh, cancer in the long term. Uh, it's not going to be a one-day affair. It's not going to be a one-week affair. It's going to be a long-term affair. The other aspect is a healthy lifestyle. In other words, avoiding uh, smoking, avoiding tobacco, uh, pan, gutka. Uh, I mean, the, the media is filled with these things. I mean, uh, telling people to avoid. And obviously, you'll have advertisements also. And these are, again, detrimental. But these are things we need to avoid. Alcohol something which needs to be taken in moderation, which are going to prevent uh, cancers, a lot, lot of cancers in the long term. And then again, the important aspect of uh, pollution overall, because we have seen that as smoking has decreased, the overall incidence of lung cancer hasn't come down very much. And the pollution, environmental pollution, has been a major uh, detriment, detrimental effect in this. And so uh, we need to take steps to, to keep our environment pollution free. And uh, it's, it's going to be an overall affair. I mean, just, it's not going to be one off affair that you're going to do. Starting from better, uh, less polluting cars to less polluting industry, uh, avoiding plastics, everything is ultimately going to help in uh, preventing this cancer in the long run. So I think these are some of the steps starting from a good healthy diet to a good healthy lifestyle and the uh, uh, avoiding uh, cleaning our environment, keeping our environment pollution free is going to help in long term keeping the cancers down. Sure, sure. Yeah. 
So thank you so much, Dr. Sanjay, for sharing this uh, significant information with our viewers today. As we are celebrating the World Cancer Day on the 4th of Feb, we hope through our series, we are able to educate and aware more and more people and help in reducing millions of preventable deaths. As Dr. Sanjay rightly mentioned that uh, air pollution, I mean, pollution is one of the biggest factors. Even in our health budget, we have, I mean, the government has allocated huge funds to I mean, control this air water and soil pollution so i think we are on the right path and hope we will be able to prevent some more deaths from cancer thank you